Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Play on GA with me Seamus Brady. In this video I'm going to be giving a roundup of the first two rounds of action which took place in the Ladies Gaelic Football Championship of 2022. So I did predictions for the first round so it's time to dive in and see just how accurate I was. So of course the first game in Group A round one was between Mayo and Tipperary. Now, I predicted Mayo to win this one. They have the, the likes of Sarah Rowe and that team. Um, but on the flip side, Tipperary are also missing the likes of Ashley Maloney or Lo Dwyer that have, have gone to Australia and uh, saying, look, that's that's too much of a blow for Tipperary to lose two generational players like that. Ashley Maloney's as good as they come. And uh, Mayo did get that victory. Of course, they'd been in the league semi final. They performed pretty well in the in the 2022 calendar year. And I was thinking Mayo just have a bit more momentum. And they got the job done. They won this opening round in Group A. They won that by 116 to 116 against Tipperary. In the same group, Dublin took on Calvin. The Leinster champions, Dublin, of course, reclaimed the Leinster title off Meath. They went into this game against Cavan. Obviously, given what happened in last year's championship, there's a bit of a buzz around the team. Obviously, Lindsay Davey, you know, is starting again. Quivo O'Connor at centre forward is getting more of a run in the team now. We're not as reliant as we were on the likes of Sinead Ahern in previous years. And people like Hannah Tyrrell, Quivo O'Connor, especially, like, are racking up a big tally. And this game now against Cavan, Dublin flexed the muscle that they have in terms of their attacking prowess. And they won it by 5-14 to Cavan's 2-4. In Group B, Round 1, Meath, the All-Ireland champions, went away to Monaghan to open their title defence. And my God, they couldn't have done it in a more impressive fashion. The backs that Meath have are fantastic. I mean, you're talking Mary-Kate Lynch there at the back. You're talking, I think, with Sean Ennis. Is a fantastic defender and the captain of the team last year. And Monica McGurkin goal is as solid a goalkeeper as there is in the country. And they kept Monaghan to one point in this game. One point. And me, then the other end, scored a goal on 13. I mean, the likes of Vicky Wall, Emma Duggan, down there at the other end, they don't need any introduction. They're a fantastic forward line. So that game, I predict that right. Me beat Monaghan there. Then in the All-Ireland Senior Championship Group D, round one, I predicted Donegal to beat Waterford, and they did, but not as comfortably as I thought they would. I thought Donegal were in great form, the, the McLaughlins, Geraldine especially. I thought, look, they're coming into this game, the likes of Yvonne Bonner are in incredible form. They're going to breeze past Waterford, I thought, but they won the game, 10 points to 1-5. Waterford putting up a good fight there. Then the game that I've got wrong, I predicted Galway to beat Kerry. I thought, look, if they managed to shut down the likes of Louise and her Hertig, that they should get the victory. But Kerry get the win by 3-10 to Galway's 3-8. Um, that's a bit of a surprise. I thought Galway maybe were just a little bit ahead of Kerry, but evidently not. Kerry pulling off a great victory there, which brings us up now to round two. So Mayo and Cavan, of course, Cavan looking to bounce back from the beating that they took at the hands of Dublin. Mayo went away to Cavan and picked up a vital one point victory, beating Cavan by 16 points to 2-9, which is a massive result for Mayo. Back to back wins that puts them, you know, through now and into that final game against Dublin. That'll be a very interesting one to watch because Dublin on the flip side, Dublin beat Tipperary away from home by 111 to six points. So again, Dublin under Mick Bohan collecting this form, Quivo O'Connor and the likes doing the stuff for Dublin. And uh, yeah, on they march again. Um, in Group C round two, Galway bounced back from their disappointing defeat at the hands of Kerry to beat Westmead by 118 to four points. It's a bit of a bad day for Westmead, but Galway have some exceptional young talent in that team. Exceptional forwards, and they bounce back well. I mean, that's a good sign there for Galway going forward. Cork on the flip side, I mean, the players that Cork have here, I mean, like very impressed with their performance in this game. Darren O'Sullivan hit a goal and five as they beat Donegal by 2-12 to 1-10. They managed to shut down Geraldine McLaughlin relatively well, who only hit one point from play. She hit four frees. Yvonne Bonner struck a goal, but Cork on the flip side, Orla Finn hit a goal on the point. Kira O'Sullivan from centre forward hit two points. Darren O'Sullivan hit 1-5. So Cork, that was definitely the game of the round that I was looking out for. 
and they won it by 212 to 110. So beating a team that had done very well in the league and Donegal and Cork, you know, all Ireland semi finalists last year, the absolute history that Cork have, you know, the, the all Ireland runs that they put together, um, they, they have such history. And to win this game is massive for Cork. 212 to 110. Good, good victory there for Shane Wynane, of course, who is the Cork manager this season for the first time. Then the final game, which took place in the All Ireland Senior Championship Group B round two, was between Armagh and Meath. And this was another game that I was really, really watching out for because Armagh have some serious talent. They've got Amy Mackin. Of course, Kelly Mallon, of course, was named the player of the month. They've got some serious form. And I was just thinking about that beating that they put on Monaghan in the Ulster semi-final where they absolutely wiped the floor with them. And I was thinking, Armagh can score at will, but so can Meath. And Meath will come into this, as I mentioned, having only conceded one point against Monaghan. So it was a real case of which forwards are going to fire. And as a result, neither really. I mean, it finished a draw. Nine points each, which for me, it's not the worst that you go away to Armagh and don't lose because, you know, the, as I mentioned, the players that they have, the Mackins and Kelly Mallon. But for Armagh, it could be an opportunity missed. You know, you're getting me fresh off the back of the announcement that Vicky Wall is going to be playing in the AFL. It's a potential banana skin there for me. Armagh had them on the ropes at stages and they just didn't put them away. So look, Mead will be definitely delighted that they've managed to kind of get out of this game with a point, but they'll be disappointed that they didn't get the victory. Arma two and a draw just kind of leaves everyone unhappy. So what's my thoughts at this stage? I think Arma are definitely dark horses. I really think Arma are dark horses for the all and the players that they have. The, and when they get going, they're so hard to stop. Um, I was really impressed with Kerry, their victory there. Cork as well, as I mentioned, Dieran O'Sullivan and Orla Finn firing for them. And if Orla Finn's firing, Cork are firing. And them beating Donegal is a really, really good sign of where they're at this year. And Shane Ronane is a very astute coach. So I think for me, it's it's one of four. It's Meath, Cork, Dublin, Arma. One of them four for me is, uh, is going to be champions at the end of the year. I, I think Kerry potentially could take a team out but I think they're the four. Mayo actually as well deserve credit, deserve some recognition, back-to-back wins. Um, I'm not sure that I think they have an All-Ireland in them though, but I think they could definitely take out one of the big four that I've mentioned there. I just don't think they could go to a final and beat a Meath or a Dublin, personally. Now, I could be absolutely wrong. Um, they have a proud history there. They've produced the likes of Cora Stanton over the years, but no, nah, I, I think it's one of Dublin, Meath, um, uh, and Cork I think this year anyway I could be wrong um, and if I had to pick now gun to my head oh <laughs> uh, I don't know <laughs> I really don't know Dublin and me they're so close I mean you're talking every game between Dublin and me there's a one score game every game between Dublin and me is a one score game including the Leinster final um, and when Dublin beat them of course in the Leinster like in the league it was a one score game as well so Oh, I'm I'm gonna go Dublin. <laughs> maybe biased, maybe biased. Um, I think Vicky Wall is that important. I know she's still gonna be playing for me, but I think potentially Dublin could have that extra motivation this year to win the All Ireland that they didn't have before. So Dublin, but then Meath, I would not be surprised at all if Meath win. Then I'm going to go Cork and then Arma. That's my power rankings in terms of who I think is going to win the All-Ireland. It could be wrong as hell, but who knows? Um, yeah, so that's the roundup, guys, here on Play on GA. Let me know what you thought of the ladies' championship so far. I've been thoroughly enjoying it. I think particularly the game between Armand and Meath was a real back and forth. Um, and then, of course, the game between Cork and Donegal was magnificent as well. And Dublin Cavan was a joy to watch from a Dublin perspective in terms of the numbers that we were running up. So... Yeah, let me know what you've made of the championship so far and uh, put your comments down below. Until the next one, guys, take care.